When it comes to understanding the universe, there are numerous unsolved problems that likely come to mind. A non-exhaustive list of these include quantum gravity, supersymmetry, the nature of dark energy and dark matter. However, one less famous but equally important issue comes as the missing baryon problem, which is arguably the first question which must be answered before cosmologists can tackle more perplexing problems surrounding dark energy and matter. Let's begin by considering the makeup of the universe. I won't dwell on this for too long as I'm sure many of you are aware that it's made up of three prominent components at present. These being dark energy, a mysterious form of energy which acts to expand space-time itself and move galaxies away from each other over a universal distance. There's also dark matter, which is matter that only acts gravitationally and does not emit any electromagnetic waves, hence the name dark. It's thought dark matter clustered into spherical halos in the early universe, which form the seeds and gravitational wells for galaxies to synthesize in where we see them today. And finally, there's baryons. In particle physics, baryons are particles which contain three quarks, like protons and neutrons. But in cosmology and astrophysics, baryon typically refers to all matter particles, including other fermions, such as electrons and non-relativistic neutrinos. And it's these baryons which we will be mostly considering, as the title suggests. Our current best estimates for the proportions of these energy densities in the universe comes out as around 68% dark energy, 27% dark matter, and only 5% baryons. This means only 5% of the energy in the universe has manifested as baryons, which is what makes up everything we see and typically interact with in our normal lives and can observe directly in space using telescopes. The evidence for these proportions comes from observations such as the rate of dimming of standard candle Type 1a supernovae with distance for dark energy, the flat rotation curve of stars within galaxies and the overall seeming lack of matter to cause this acts as evidence for dark matter, as well as the increased gravitational lensing of light from distant galaxies by clusters, and finally the absorption spectra of gas and starlight analysis for baryons. So knowing what we know, what if I asked you how many of these baryons do you think reside and are detected within galaxies? Remember here that baryons make up stars, planets, and everything else we observe using telescopes. The answer only comes out to be around 10%, with less than that being contained within stars. So of that 5% of the entire universe pie, only around 10% of that 5% is in the form of stars and gas within galaxies. This means that around 90% of the baryons are seemingly missing. But of course, we can't just observe stars within galaxies. Looking at places around them, such as the circumgalactic medium and intergalactic medium between galaxies, measurements can account for anywhere between 50 to 60% of the baryons in space. As mentioned, detection typically comes from absorption spectra, which is where gas clouds of baryons are illuminated by black body radiation, or radiation containing every wavelength of photons from stars. The atoms within these clouds get excited by specific photons from the radiation which have the right amount of energy to excite electrons to higher energy levels. These photons therefore get blocked out by the gas, and so we get black bands in the spectra. We can correspond these to specific atoms and energy transitions to work out exactly what particles are in the gas. There are other methods such as observing the 21 centimeter hydrogen line, which is the result of a hyperfine transition when the electron spin flips, and also the SZ effect help with finding more baryons in the universe. But even with all these different detection methods, around 30% of all the baryons in the universe are still missing. You might be wondering how we know that they're missing. How can we be sure that there are more baryons in the universe if we can't detect them? This comes from the analysis of the Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB. This has come to be one of the most useful observations from the early universe and allows us to measure the energy density of baryons earlier in time. The proportion of baryons affects the CMB spectrum, and we can use predictions from Big Bang nuclear synthesis, which explains the proportions of baryons from the Big Bang, which then ended up in hydrogen, helium, deuterium, etc., to derive quite an accurate inventory for the initial proportions and energy density of baryons. Then since baryons can only decay into other baryons, we should expect this energy density to not change over time. This is how we can be sure that there's still many missing from our current measurements. So far, we can account for some of the baryons within galaxies themselves, and many more in the space and filaments between them, but where could this final large slice of the pie be? It's tempting to just put it down to lack of power on our measuring devices, or blame it on not understanding or interpreting the measurements properly, but that is not a satisfying answer. Instead, physicists have taken to simulating entire universes using supercomputers to try and see where all these baryons end up. These include hydrodynamical simulations, such as Eagle, 
which are capable of creating universes which contain dark matter and baryons in initial proportions similar to what we think there was in our own early universe, and simulating their interactions over time. It does this through coding in many of the values of fundamental constants, and also what are known as numerical prescriptions. You see, most interesting baryonic processes are hydrodynamical, compared to dark matter which only interacts through gravity. These baryonic processes include the formation of stars and black holes, the explosion of supernovae, stellar feedback, AGN winds and jets, and so on and so forth. These processes happen on small scales, much smaller than even supercomputers can handle. This means that in order to model them on universal scales, they must be approximated or accounted using subgrid physics. This does things such as turning on AGN jets if an area of the simulation has certain quantities satisfied, for example, through reaching a minimum temperature. This approach isn't perfect, but does allow cosmologists to program these important feedback mechanisms into simulations, the results of which show that many of the baryons get evacuated from galactic halos over time, as stars form from hydrogen gas and eventually die, some of which forming black holes. Processes such as stellar winds or jets from AGNs cause other baryons in the halos to be pushed out even further than where we are detecting them today. Galaxies and galaxy clusters contain large amounts of dark matter, as previously mentioned. The stars, which is what we see as mostly making up galaxies, are only really in the centre of these massive dark matter halos, which expand out to even greater radii. Because they're dark matter, we cannot see them. Our hydrodynamical simulations predict feedback can evacuate baryons even further and fully kick them out of the entire halo. This could mean they're no longer gravitationally bound and perhaps dark energy might then cause them to recede even quicker from their original galaxy cluster. Sadly, these simulations aren't perfect. As well as the issues mentioned before, supercomputers cannot handle really high precision. They model universes where a single dark matter or baryonic particle can have as much mass as one million suns in order to save computing power on resolution. Obviously, this is many, many orders of magnitude too big. Another issue comes from the analysis of patterns and trends from simulation data. Say, for example, you program in too many empirical laws and physical relations. You then cannot be surprised when the data received shows mathematically these patterns. It is difficult to get supercomputers to simulate universes which themselves lead to original observations which agree in our own universe without giving the computer all the information which would inevitably lead to such observations. We want to give it the bare minimum to create a realistic universe so any results won't be affected too much by our initial inputs, but by the processes which naturally follow from them. This is a great challenge, but not impossible, with supercomputers getting better and better by the day. These issues are improving with each simulation. But as of present, we cannot rely solely on simulation data to say where these missing baryons are, but they might give us a clue. The missing baryon problem is still very much open-ended and it's the opinion of many cosmologists that we must understand and account for that 5% of the universe we can see before moving on to comprehending the 95% we cannot. If you've enjoyed this video, then leaving a like and subscribing if you haven't already is always appreciated. See you next time.